Good morning, everyone. This is just a short catch up before we break for the Christmas holidays. At the recent staff briefings, I said I would update you on the whole college review before Christmas if there was anything in particular that needed to be communicated. As you will no doubt have seen, the assistant chief executive posts have been trawled and interviews for them will be held in early January. That will start the ball rolling for a series of appointments, including the heads of faculty, heads of school and Centre for Excellence manager posts. We also hope to close out the deputy head of school posts by the end of April, which will mean we have some time to work with the new appointees during May and June so that everyone is up to speed on the new arrangements well in advance of the new structure going live. The principles of recruitment document and the whole college review timeline were released last week. So I hope that everyone has had an opportunity to look at those documents and understand the process that we're working through and how it will be delivered. So that's all I really wanted to say on that, except to remind you that my door is always open if anyone wants to drop in for a chat about the new arrangements. And likewise, Emer or Jill are willing to meet anyone with a query or concern or just if they want to have a, a quiet chat about any of the uh, new developments. Another key issue that I want to mention is day one planning for Brexit. That's the term we've been told to use by DFE. And at the moment, the advice from DFE is to prepare for a no deal scenario. The college has submitted day one plans and they've been accepted by DFE, but it must be said that those plans are a best guess and we really have no idea at this stage what will transpire, should a no deal outcome be the eventuality. I'm sure you're all following the coverage on television and the wider media and you can appreciate that we are short on certainty and big on conjecture. The facts are that this college annually draws down about 60% of the EU funding coming into the FE sector in Northern Ireland. That means that the remaining 40% is spread across the other five colleges. And that's a significant level of exposure for us in Southwest College and the ending of that funding will be problematic for us. We are involved in a delivery uh, across a number of interreg piece ESF programmes amounting to approximately 21 million for programmes running up to July 2022. In relation to cross-border activity, Southwest College currently has 470 students studying with us from the Republic of Ireland. Most of these attend the Enniskillen campus and make the current provision at Fairview and Kelly Havlin more sustainable. And these numbers are factored into the scale of accommodation we have underway in the new £30 million Earn campus. We also have 640 students, mainly attending the Dungannon campus, who are not UK or Republic of Ireland nationals. Their families moved to the region to work in the, the many food production and engineering plants. And again, those numbers enable us to maintain a campus and a service that would not be sustainable otherwise. As many of you know, the Erasmus programme, valued at 2.5 million, currently supports 400 plus students and staff to travel across Europe and beyond. And we've been advised that we cannot lead and may not be able to participate in Erasmus. We are doing everything in our power to mitigate these risks and Southwest College is leading a £300,000 project for the FE sector in Northern Ireland to quantify possible implications for colleges and in particular the issues of future funding, international students and skill shortages. This is our attempt to bring some real focus onto the issues we face and the likely impacts from the termination of EU funding streams for the sector but most significantly for us. I suppose the final point I want to flag is that Southwest College is the largest training provider in Northern Ireland with between 1,500 and 2,000 TFS apprentices annually and that provision is 40% funded from the EU. If that funding was to terminate 
we would have to reduce the apprenticeship places available by at least 40%. And that could be six to 800. That would mean that potentially significant numbers of employers across the Southwest region would be unable to secure a funded apprentice from Southwest College. And for many small two and three person businesses, that is important. So I don't have all the answers for you, but as we move towards March, it is important that I brief you on the level of provision in this college that is directly supported by EU funding and that may not continue in a no-deal scenario or even a bad deal scenario. The reality is the deal is outside of our control. It's for others to discuss, debate and agree, but we will have to plan for the consequences. I've been engaging, as has Jill, with a wide range of stakeholders across government departments and with public representatives across this region. They are not currently sitting in the executive but it's important that they understand the unique circumstances we face in this college and what a bad outcome may do to our organisation and the services we provide. Finally, we've had a very positive ETI inspection of college work-based learning provision and a high level of capacity was achieved and we were also awarded outstanding for leadership and management. We've had a very strong performance at WorldSkills UK, including four medals and one highly commended. And Southwest College finished seventh in the UK in terms of the overall medal table. The college was also recognized as a Beacon Award commended college at the AOC conference in November in the areas of employer engagement and international activity, demonstrating a high level of innovation, impact and sustainability in these key areas. We have a new ESF funded College Connect social inclusion program just commenced across the sector with Southwest College operating as the lead partner. We have a new welding academy funded through Assured Skills and that's been successfully delivered with four engineering employers in Mid Ulster. And we've just delivered an educational consultancy tender with the British Council for overseas quality assurance provision in Vietnam. We've gone on to participate in an educational trade mission in China. That happened in October as part of the Belt and Road Initiative and an MOU was signed between the Northern Ireland Colleges and a sectoral body representing 20 colleges in China. And we've just had two new EU funded projects approved. The first one, Housing 4.0, uh, which is funded through the Interreg Northwest Europe programme, and that's a 4.2 million project uh, with uh, a Southwest College budget of 390,000. And the focus there is on retrofitting low energy social housing. And the second one is the Creative Engine uh, Strategic Partnership. That's funded through Erasmus Plus. And the project will help embed creativity within the broad discipline of engineering. Southwest College is the lead partner on that particular project, again with a project value for us of 390,000. We've also had some enterprise inductions carried out across all campuses and a range of bespoke initiatives delivered to about 240 students and that's aligned with Global Entrepreneurship Week in November. So finally, Folks, um, I would like to announce an early closing for Christmas on Friday at 1.30. We've had a very good term and I know staff are looking forward to a break. I suspect that many of you will be under pressure to get the final preparations completed in time for Christmas. So I wish you a Merry Christmas and hope that you and your families have a great festive season and spend a lot of time doing very little. <laughs>